Sally YouTube, welcome back to the Not Even French YouTube channel. I'm so excited for this video because it's all about the things that make French people just kind of bug a little bit, you know, like, like, like what? Like, like they cannot compute. <laughs> it's things that French people just don't understand. And I mean this with love, I mean they can logically process it, it's not that they're incapable of understanding but it's just culturally they just don't get it and I'm talking about generally from Anglo-Saxon culture right, there's just some things that we do or some things that are present in our culture that are so not present in the French culture and when we're talking about them it makes them be like what the... If you are French watching this video, I would love for you to leave in the comments below, by the way, the other things that you just don't understand about the Anglo-Saxon cultures. Like, what else don't you get above and beyond the list that I'm going to present to you today? But just before I get into the video, all of my self-improvement junkies, listen up. Today's video is sponsored by one of my favorite apps, which is Blinkist. So Blinkist basically enables you to read non-fiction books at record speed, because what it does is take over 3,000 non-fiction book titles and condenses them into 15-minute nuggets or blinks that you can either read or listen to. And so the knowledge has been absorbed, the key learnings from all of these books like that. They have books on everything from money, language learning, parenting, health and wellness, career, finances, whatever domain that you would like to gain more knowledge in or upskill in, they have absolutely got it. And imagine getting the key insights from some of the world's leading non-fiction books just while you're cooking, going for a walk, it's just so easy. So in honor of International Women's Day that was just celebrated this week, I read two female empowerment kind of books. So I read On Blinkist Becoming by Michelle Obama and Unapologetically Ambitious by Shiel Akambo, which was all about her journey and becoming one of the very, very rare female African-American CEOs of Silicon Valley. So if you are a learning animal like me, the first 100 people to click the link down below are gonna have access to a seven day free trial of Blinkist Premium. And if you wanna sign up, you'll also get 25% off the membership. So happy learning, and without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing that French people just don't get is the concept of a lunchbox. So my friends and I were having a nostalgic kind of conversation the other day about what our parents used to put in our lunchboxes. So going to school, say primary school, you'd have your lunchbox and you'd usually have like sandwiches and maybe some fruit, maybe some grapes, a yogurt, some chippies, maybe a muffin or some kind of homemade baking, nuts, you get the point. And so we're comparing what our favorite lunchbox ingredients were and for French people like Niels it kind of makes them bug a little bit because you know when they're watching these movies of you know the parents in the kitchen preparing the lunchbox for the next day and that kind of stuff they're like what's that you know because for them they grow up on the canteen system and so they go to school and they have a restaurant a canteen that they eat at every day and this starts all the way from the crèche through to the maternelle, all the way through school, and there's even an entitlement within the workplace. So this blew my mind when I moved to France, but it was like, your workplace actually takes responsibility in some way for you eating lunch every day, either through restaurant tickets or credits that it actually helps to support you purchase your lunch, or through providing a highly discounted, heavily, heavily reduced and subsidized canteen where you can access food as well. So for them, the idea of having to take a lunchbox to school, having different kids, having different things to eat as well, that inequality that can happen through the lunchbox system as well, all of that is very foreign to a French person and it's something that they just don't really get. Another thing that French people just don't really get is putting off healthcare, but specifically I want to focus on dentistry because even though we have you know hospital care and general sickness and hospital sicknesses and all that kind of stuff completely covered in New Zealand and I'm pretty sure it's the same in Canada for example as well and the UK when it comes to things like the optometrist or the dentist unless it's emergency care or you're a very low income earner that's private and you're gonna have to pay quite a lot of money and so in New Zealand you can have completely middle-class people who know that they need to go to the dentist maybe they have a filling maybe they can tell that there's something not quite right with one of their teeth and they will put it off and put it off and put it off because 
it's really expensive. It's like in the hundreds of dollars to go and see the dentist and get that filling. Because the French people know that effectively every time they go to the doctor, the dentist, the optometrist, with the combination of social security and their mutuelle, it's mostly reimbursed they have never had to think twice about going to see a medical professional. In fact, they'll go as a precautionary measure, just in case. And I think for them, it's a really hard concept to wrap your head around, which is if I even suspect I might need a bit of medical intervention, I'll actually put it off, see if it will heal itself, see if I can just get over it. I would say that attitude is definitely something difficult for French people to understand. Another thing that I find really difficult for French people to understand specifically is the idea of working part-time as you're growing up. Working part-time throughout high school, working part-time throughout university to pay your way through school. So I've been working since the age of 14, whether that be, you know, in school holidays, um, part-time jobs, oh God, everything from you know, the supermarket checkout chick, to picking beans in the field, to being a professional pet feeder, feeding people's pets while they were on holiday. Like I've had lots of crappy jobs, but that's super normal in New Zealand, age sort of 14, 15, even younger if you're doing babysitting and stuff like that. But you start earning your own pocket money. You start learning about earning money, budgeting, and paying for things yourself in general. And then I would say most people, it would be extremely rare not to have do are working 10 to 20 hours per week when they're at university as well working in retail working in hospitality I found it in France you don't see this I mean I honestly think it's even rare to find French high school kids with weekend jobs or evening jobs after school and the reason is that it's so heavy in terms of homework in terms of workload you also have school for half the day on Saturday it's just not really as conducive of an environment to have those part-time jobs and when it comes to going to university or you know business school or engineering school what I found is that usually the base cost is relatively inexpensive and then there's a lot of living grants like the CAF and other sort of grants for students that basically they take all the grants parents tend to kind of top them up and the base fees are generally so low that they're not actually working alongside studying which was just a completely different concept for me also when I was studying in France our classes ran like a full-time job they were from nine till 6 p.m. every day. So it wasn't as flexible, like in New Zealand, it's much more autonomous in that you'll maybe just have two or three hours worth of class per day, but then you have a lot of self-directed study to do, but you sort of fit your part-time job and your study, you kind of arrange your own hours and do it around that kind of system. So yeah, working part-time, I have the impression, correct me if I'm wrong, French people in the comments, but the norm is not to be working part-time from the age of 15 to 22 while you're still studying. The next thing French people don't understand, I think, is the concept of either intuitive eating or eating when you're not hungry. So I've spoken at length on this channel about how regimented the French are about when you are supposed to eat. And I find it really hard to believe that such a diverse pool of people and such a diverse population could all be systematically hungry at exactly the same time and never want to eat outside of that. And it's interesting because there's a lot of talk now around intuitive eating and intermittent fasting and things like that. I just know that that will take a really long time to penetrate the French culture for sure. There's also like this, you know, in New Zealand, it's completely normal to be really busy and occupied and out and about and be, come home and you're starving at 3 p.m., grab some lunch, put that together, I just feel like French people wouldn't allow that to happen in their days in general like there's just an ultimate prioritization of mealtime and then also the concept of eating when you're not hungry is very hard for the French people to understand so just eating because just gorging just having chips at 9 p.m. at night even though you've had dinner and you're full it's just very very difficult for French to understand because They've been really trained in the self-control game. They've been trained to listen to their body when it's had enough. And they don't tend to eat just because, eat for comfort, eat out of emotional reasons. I mean, it's probably a really good thing, but that's something that they find really difficult to understand and obviously something that's really, really common elsewhere. Another thing that French people don't tend to understand, well, at least Niels and a few of his friends that I've spoken to anyway, is our approach to school. And I mean, in New Zealand specifically, and I'm really talking about primary school here so 
When I talk to Niels about sort of modern schools in New Zealand, right, where you have different corners for different learning styles and they try not to have the kids sitting at the desk all day and teachers are really lovely and we do lots of sports and we don't have any real serious tests or exams from my memory anyway. I mean, we've got a few tests and stuff, but no exam, like stressful exams probably until we're like 10, 11, 12 or older, like school just seems so much more laid back and fun than the French primary school system where you're like, you know, with strict teachers yelling at you, sitting at your desk for really long hours, doing the dictate and exams and stuff from six years old. And I was telling Niels the other day, there's this like clapping rhythm that makes every New Zealander twitch because when teachers wanna get your attention, when you're in primary school in New Zealand, they'll be like, Like if the room's really loud, really noisy, making a lot of noise, so you, they do their clapping rhythm and then you all are meant to turn back and clap back in the same rhythm and then they mix it up and stuff like that. And I was saying that was how teachers would lower the volume in a room or would get your attention. And Nails was just like, what the hell? <laughs> like our professors would have just said, Silence! <laughs> like, like, I think it's just this sort of like modern, politically correct, kind of child-led approach to school in New Zealand and maybe, I'm not sure, in Aussie and the States and stuff as well. In France it's a lot more strict and he's just like, gosh, you guys had it easy. <laughs> Another thing that French people really don't understand is how you can feel so enthusiastic about the smallest things. Like, I don't know, just picking up something like a pretty box or something and be like, oh, that's so cute! Or like hearing someone's news, that's amazing! Or like coming out of a film and just being like, that was incredible and that kind of thing. I mean, we all know by now that the maximum something can ever be in France is pas mal, not bad. And they really, I think, find it hard to understand that, that those feelings are genuine. Whenever I've asked French people about that, they're like, oh, seems fake, seems hypocrite. It's very hypocrite, I don't trust it. You know, they don't trust that you can genuinely feel that enthused or that excited about some of the smallest things. Another thing French people just do not get is, I'll call it the Kardashian look. Like this approach to beauty, the fillers, the microbladed brows, the plump lips, the big booties, that kind of look, the Kardashian look, is really not a goer in France. And it's not something that French girls would aspire to at all. For them, give them Vanessa Paradis uh, any day of the week. Something that French people definitely don't get is how you could possibly think so little of yourself <laughs> that you would live your life in active wear, even when you don't go to the gym. <laughs> and maybe it's changed during the pandemic, maybe it's fine, I don't know. But going out in your track pants, live in life, like for example in New Zealand, like I just go to the supermarket in my jandals and track pants and a hoodie, I could go in pajamas if I wanted to. No one cares, you know? Whereas in France it would be like, how could you do that to yourself? And how could you do that to them? The shop assistants, have you no pride? Another thing that French people don't really get is print handwriting. So the French are very much taught to write in cursive like this and what I found when I was in primary school and we were learning how to write, we were very much into like print letters and the girls almost a fashion for handwriting. Like we kind of wanted it to make it look like a stylized font, but it was very much like print and Niels cracks up at my signature because I can't do like squiggly loops and stuff. It's just like R space McCarthy and I do like a little loop on the Y, but otherwise it's basically and he's like, you write like a baby. <laughs> So yeah, the curse of handwriting is definitely still a goer in France and I think they look at, you know, print writing that's just like really plain. If you're writing a letter and it's just in plain print with no cursive whatsoever, they're like, you poor uneducated fool. Another thing that French people don't get is air conditioning. We all know it makes them very froid. French people don't like being cold, that I find that they get cold extremely easily. Like there might be a slight breeze and they're like, oh, you know, um, so air conditioning is never going to go down well. Plus, you've got this whole sort of side of the French that are a little bit, not hypochondriac, but very alert about their health. Their health is very important to them. And they're very highly aware and talk about the fact that air conditioning can circulate 
germs and all of that good stuff as well. So if you can avoid putting on air conditioning or even using fans, I found they do, even to the point of discomfort, to the point where I'd rather be sweltering in the summer in a Parisian apartment then invest in a heat pump or air conditioning unit in the apartments. They're just not there. They will avoid it at all costs. Another thing that French people don't really get, Niels always told me that when he was watching any sort of like action movie, like Jason Bourne or anything like that, he always thought it was really unrealistic how there'd be a phone with a, a SIM card that you could just get rid of and then quickly replace with a new SIM card and have a new prepaid phone. Because in France it takes you a lot of paperwork and contracts to sign up for a long-term mobile plan and everyone's on contracts basically. It's extremely rare, almost impossible to find prepaid. You can find like traveler's sims that are prepaid that work for 14 days and are like 50 euros completely overpriced. You can find stuff like this but if you want to be living in the country and have a reasonably priced mobile plan you're going to be on a contract. So he's like that's so unrealistic as if you could put the sim card in the phone and just like be activated straight away without signing a contract. And the last thing and maybe this is more on the more American side of things but French people don't understand why you'd never do a sport because it's too high a risk of injury and this kind of goes back to my other point as well about the healthcare but you know if you you know the, the big skiers in France like if you break a limb you break a limb you're going to get great care you're going to get great physiotherapy you'll get back kind of thing but I think you know maybe hearing Americans say like you know that certain sports are like too risky wouldn't want to risk it and high risk of injury and that being a reason not to do a sport I think it's a little bit harder for them to compute because what do you mean too risky for what it's like you'll always have the safety net of healthcare right anyways guys don't make the conversation one way i would love to hear from you let me know down below some other things that you think french people have a really hard time understanding or if you're french yourself let us know down below some things about the anglo-saxon culture or way of life that you're like mm, i just don't get it i think a bonus one for example would be that hustle and grind culture hustle 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 always connected responding to emails at midnight and on the weekends and all of that kind of stuff so yeah i would love to hear from you and your ideas down below and otherwise i'll catch you here next week on the not even french channel a bientôt